What's up guys, it's me, Coach Mills, and in this video we're going to be breaking down the five tips that will help you rank up to Grandmaster. So if you want to climb as quickly as possible, this is the perfect video for you. But do me a huge solid and please smash that subscribe button because we're so close to 50,000 subscribers and I really want to get there. We're going to be doing something cool when we do. Now the first thing that you need to do if you want to be a Grandmaster player is learn to enable the winning player or the best player on your team. Now we already know you're a Coach Mill subscriber, so you're already going to be the best player on your team. That's just a given, but you need to find the second best player on your team. The player that is doing the most outside of yourself and you need to help that person. They could be a tank, a DPS, or support, but you need to acknowledge or understand when a player on your roster is going above and beyond, when they're making good plays, when they're playing well, and that is the person that you should start to rely on more, coordinate more, and follow their game plan. If you have a tank that is absolutely popping off, it is your job to identify that that's the case and enable them so that they will pop off even more and realize that when anyone on your team is playing really well, starting to do really well, the enemy is going to start to swap up to shut them down. But it's your job as someone else, whether you're a tank, whether you're a DPS, whatever, to help them and aid them and prevent the enemy from being able to shut down both of you because you're working together. You don't even really have to try and synergize with this person with their input or on purpose or with communication all you have to do is take note of how they're getting their value in the first place like what are they doing and then make sure that you enable them or protect them so that they can keep doing said job if you have an honor that's getting these crazy nades off do not let her get dove over and over again peel for her protect her and wait until she makes these huge plays if you have a dps that is just absolutely fragging don't let the enemy take a 2v1 or a 3v1 or even put extra emphasis into peeling or pocketing that DPS because you realize that with the resources that you give them, they can make something amazing out of it and win you the team fight. These are the things that you need to identify because the reality of ranked is you will have a mixed bag and sometimes you'll have really, really bad teammates and sometimes occasionally you'll have teammates that are better than the rest, but unless you acknowledge those players and do your best to enable them, then you're never going to be able to utilize their full strengths and you might be throwing away a completely free win. Now, the next big thing that I got to tell you for those of you who want to climb to Grandmaster and this is holding you back and it's the overemphasis of Kovacs and Aim Labs. And this might actually ruin any chance in the future for me getting a sponsorship from these two companies, but who freaking cares because it's not helping you improve. It's just not. Well, these can be decent tools to build up that initial aim or get used to just shooting in the first place on a mouse and keyboard. Inside the game of Overwatch, everything you do is different. The character models are different, the recoil is different, the pressure you're under is different, and your own movement is gonna be different. There's way too many variables involved for aim labs to truly help you. It's gonna help you in a very, very small, minute way, in the same way that perhaps lifting a weight would help you play a game like football. Sure, it might make you slightly better in the long run to be more muscular, but is that actually gonna make you better at throwing a football more accurately, more precise to the right person with the right play? No. And while I think they could be a decent tool for warming up, I think there are far better ways that you can warm up in game, like with Vax to try a free for all, or just your own custom practice that is built from inside the game and put all those aim trainers on the shelf where they belong. Now, the next thing, the next big tip that you have to know if you want to climb to Grandmaster, and it has to do with building up your game sense. I always talk about the three pillars, and one of which is game sense. How do you improve your game sense? How do you get better at it? How do you become a smarter player? Now, there's several things that you can do. The first thing you can do is what you're already doing, research and learn, whether that is watching YouTube videos like this one, or whether that is you going and watching some high ranked players or streamers. Take note in what they do and get away with and what are the mechanical things and the playmaking things that they abuse and do in their games that you realize is gonna be the standard. These days, I actually consider myself more of a tank main, with my best characters being like Zarya and Roadhog and even D.Va. But the thing is, I was never a tank main before. But the reason that it was so easy for me to learn and pick up tank is my favorite streamer was Harblue, which is a notorious top 10 freaking tank main. And I would watch him all the time. And I would learn. And I would apply. And I would 
easily pick up a lot of the things that he was doing because I would think about why he was doing it. And that's just one example, but basically watching and trying to critically apply it to your own gameplay, not a one-to-one, -one, because remember, you're not going to have the same level of resources, supports, whether it's teammates, but you can still learn the limit testing. You can still learn the ideas behind the clutches, and you can still overall increase your game sense through that and overall study of the game. Plus, reviewing your own VODs is fantastic for improvement. And of course, the next step in improving your game sense is getting a specific VOD, a paid VOD, and you can check that out on the Patreon down below if you're interested. But let's move on to the next big pillar, the thing that you need to master if you want to be a Grandmaster, and that's positioning. Now, positioning is a tricky one because the thing that people don't understand about positioning is it's directly reliant on both your game sense and your mechanical skill. Knowing what abilities to play around or what ultimates that the enemy have can directly change your positioning. If you know that the enemy has a certain ultimate, let's say a shatter, the way that you're going to play around it is going to be fundamentally different. You might play the high ground. You might not push up next to your team. You might spread out. There's a lot of different ways you could play around that. And that positioning is directly being affected by your game sense or your ability tracking or your understanding of these abilities and ultimates. Now, another thing that you might not consider is that positioning is directly influenced by your mechanical skill. Because think of mechanical skill as a certain percentile of respect at a certain distance or in a certain scenario. So when enemies are right on top of you and they're just staring at you into open space, your mechanical skill on Roadhog, being able to hit a hook at someone that's just staring right at you and kill them, demands a certain amount of respect. Which means that if they're within your range of your hook, even if you're in the open, if they're in a 1v1 with you, they're in a bad position. But imagine a different situation where you're a Roadhog that can't hit a hook no matter how hard they try. Now all of a sudden, they are way freaking safer in the open and the positioning might not even be bad assuming that you have poor or lacking mechanical skill. And this is true for pretty much every single character. Depending on how good your mechanical skill is or how bad the enemies are, what is a good position changes, and it's your job to evaluate not only how aggressive you could be positionally and not die, but take note of key weaknesses in the opponent's play that you could take advantage of by positioning more aggressively as well, or if the enemy is demanding of a certain level of respect, then an aggressive position is no longer a safe position, and you need to back up accordingly and give the right amount of respect to that skill. Now, the last thing that we need to talk about is your mechanical skill. And I think that this is the one that a lot of people get the most wrong. Mechanical skill is the building blocks of everything else in the game. Because you have to understand that even if you're in a good position and you make a good decision based on your game sense, if your mechanical skill is terrible, like you can't perform those basic actions, that simple Roadhog Hook actions that we talked about, then all of the sudden, every good decision you make just doesn't actually connect. It's like pushing a target where you have your cooldowns, you're at max health and they're at 1 HP or half, and somehow you still lose. So you need to have a certain amount of mechanical skill to connect your game sense and your positioning together with the rest of your ability. Now, if you actually earn mechanical skill past that, then it can be one of two things. One, it can be something that propels you even further, capable of pushing the bounds of your game sense and your positioning because you're confident and secure in your own ability to execute a certain play. But it could also be a crutch. And this is how it can become a crutch because you're not positioning well and you're not making proper engagement decisions. You're purely relying on mechanical skill and that might work at a certain rank, once you climb, your mechanical skill will no longer be enough and you have bad decision making and bad positioning, but because you basically did all those things wrong and still won anyways because of great mechanical skill, now you're stuck because your mechanical skill will only get you so far. So it's important to acknowledge yourself and be realistic with yourself as a player. Which of these three are the things that you need to work on the most? Which of these three are holding you back from achieving that rank up? And if you start thinking about the game in this way, with these three things in mind, you're definitely going to improve. And I would highly suggest focusing each one of these individually as you go on your journey towards Grandmaster and beyond. But if you have any big questions, definitely let me know in the comments down below. And what video you want to see next, please smash that subscribe. We're almost to 50,000 subscribers. Follow me on Twitch and join the Discord if you want more tips. Thank you for coming by, and I'll see you next time.